Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Coast to Coast Combat Hour. I'm your host, Matthew Hawkins, along with my co-host, Ed Carvajal. And on a weekly basis, we plan to bring you the biggest news and interviews in the world of combat sports. Ed, is it starting to get chilly out there, brother? Hell yeah, we got snow coming on Thursday. So that's why I'm hooded up and, and trying to trying to buckle down and stay warm. Yeah, we got the wildfires out here that never seem to end and, uh, you know, zero humidity and, you know, 60 mile per hour winds. So are they anywhere near you? Uh, yeah. Not not so much. A couple couple, you know, hour and a half north. But, you know, some of the college stuff up at Pepperdine, Loyola Marymount, all that stuff's in danger. And, um, you know, there's just just a lot of action. I have some friends up north and and, uh, you know people people families getting evacuated and stuff so so far nothing nothing too crazy but uh at least personally but um other than that uh you know it's not good people yeah just, i think daniel's up that way i should have messaged checked on him i just saw the, the video and stuff of what you guys are going through over there so that's pretty rough i mean you know with the snow we're just getting ice and snow that's going to probably inconvenience us for like a day and a half but it's going to get washed away yeah, I mean, I, you know, obviously, I don't know the East Coast uh, chill, but yeah, the fires are just gnarly. It throws a lot of stuff off, and then we'll eventually get some rains so that'll lead to uh, mudslides. And mm. you know, there's already been, I think, 45 deaths or something with the fires Easy. here. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of ugliness. But um, with that said, uh, you know, we got some uh, events that we're going to uh, talk about that happened last weekend, and uh, and look forward to this weekend's uh, UFC and Bellator. Um, you know, I can't got to start it off with. Uh, with a little bit of redemption here, uh, I sat here and listened to AJ and you uh, call me a drunk. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, <so>. yeah. <laughs> so as Bob Marley sings "Redemption" song uh -huh. in the background, we uh, you know we turns out we got what the fight of the year, maybe the knockout all time knockout in UFC history. Yeah, with, uh, I mean he was, I mean, but he was losing. Oh, he was losing. I didn't. Pick, I didn't pick a winner. In fact, I thought yeah. uh, Korean Zombie was going to win the fight, and and he was up until the last, very last second of that bout. But, yeah. um, but uh, you know, it it turned out to be just an incredible fight, um, start to finish. You know, basically what I expected. I expected to see a stand up battle with with the two guys, and uh, you know, we ended up getting that back elbow knockout, which is um, easily one of the top five craziest knockouts that I've ever seen, if not number one without uh without really thinking too hard about it yeah i mean it's definitely a, a candidate for fight of the year and knockout of the year um i was actually doing some research because uh you know that the sites i write for uh like to do these uh end of the year award articles and um you know and and oddly enough before they sent out that the request that, that it was before this past weekend and obviously that that that's definitely in there but we still have like a lot of events left before the end of the year so something i don't know if anything more spectacular than that can happen because that was some that was like a blade move or something out of a video game what yaya rodriguez did yeah i mean that whole fight was a was a street fighter you know it's it's it was what you get when you got you know korean zombies got his nickname because he's just a straightforward never stop you know stay in your face and um you know, had he probably used a little bit more uh, strategy, he would have uh, he could have avoided that. He had the fight pretty much wrapped up. I don't know. I have no idea what his corner was telling him. And obviously it was closer. Uh, you know, it was a close fight. But uh, I know two of the three judges had it three rounds to one. Um, I mean, I, I know Rodriguez does a lot of flashy movement. Do you think that was selling a lot of people over to thinking that it, was, that it wasn't, uh, you know, three to or three or four rounds or whatever it was to, to zombie. Like, do you think people were actually thinking Rod Rodriguez was winning with all those, those uh, antics? I didn't hear anybody say he was winning. I know one of the judges had it two, two, and I, I suppose I could have saw that. I mean, the early leg kicks and stuff were pretty, pretty brutal. Um, I, I, uh, I, I think zombie won the round one um, round two. I think, you know, initially I thought uh, Rodriguez won. I haven't watched, rewatched the fight. Um, round three was real close. And then I think uh, Zombie won round four, and then uh, round five was kind of a toss-up. So I mean, it was it was, I guess it could have been considered a close fight. Um, I think Zom Zombie was obviously landing more, but like you said, maybe the flash and and uh, some of the uh, some of the other stuff was uh, 
was was influencing some people. But uh, you know, I don't know. I it just it was just one of those fights. You know, I you know I tried to talk about it last week that it just seemed like a, a stylistically it was a it set up for that. You know, if you have a straightforward guy who just comes forward throwing punches, pretty you know not a lot of head movement necessarily at, at a zombie, just kind of a you know coming in throwing three four punch combinations, and then you have another guy who's capable of throwing a you know a, a spin kick or a a wheel kick or a, you know, or as it turned out, some kind of crazy back elbow that, you know, we've never seen that one in UFC. I know um, Anderson Silva threw one against Tony Frickland in, uh, gosh, I believe it was uh, uh, Cage Rage uh, or, or something like that in, in England um, years ago, but it was more of a forward, you know, forward shot. It wasn't, you know, while he's kind of ducking down, throwing it up behind his head. So. Yeah, I think before that, the craziest thing to on that level we've ever seen was John Jones's version of the, of the, the twelve six elbow from you know sh- shooting in on a single and then coming over and around with it, so that's that was def- definitely I don't know if that was a hail mary from him, um, Mark Lamanca who, who who writes at Newsday over here on the East Coast in Long Island, he put up some video of the third or fourth round where where he noticed uh, that um, that elbow Rayer was trying to throw that elbow earlier on in the fight, but I don't I, I didn't see it as clearly as he he did I, I kind of. I just feel like that was more of a uh, of just uh you know let me try something. He he threw it earlier in the fight, but it wasn't at the same angle. I mean, he wasn't fully bent over. It was yeah. more of it was more of just a a standing um you know just kind of throw back the elbow. So he was throwing a couple variations. I think maybe he threw it twice. Um, I don't think the first one landed. I think the second one might be the one that busted up Zombie's lip in the second round. Um, but again, I'd have to double check. But it, it was right around that time. Um when he when he split his lip open but uh, well you think so he broke his foot or he says he broke his foot I, I don't know if it was confirmed that it was broken but they i know they had to help him out of there it just seems like um i mean i know people want uh, him to fight uh zabit uh magomed shapirov or whatever one of the magomedovs or whatever the hell we were talking about not that long ago um the guy that fought at 223 uh, i just do you think you think that fight's gonna happen i, I feel like he's just I don't want to say he's soft because he's a fighter, but it seems like like you know he was out for so long. He had the contract dispute, and then he was out because he got hurt, and now he he got hurt in this fight. I like like I feel like we're not going to see him again. The as far as everything I've read, he was cleared and didn't have a broken foot. Oh, so all right. um, I I did I did. I catch that again. I, I can't really say it's complete confirmation. Um, I think I saw it through Twitter, so I don't remember the exact source, but um. You know, I did see Cowboy Cerrone say basically he's been injured a lot lately, and that led to a lot, a lot of his layoffs, um, and, and he's been had dealt with some sicknesses and stuff. So, you know, uh, you know, we get into this all the time about you know guys duck, you know, not necessarily ducking, but getting injured or missing fights. But um, you know, he's a talent. He's a young kid, uh, and uh, he's fun to watch. I, I think he's, you know, I don't know if he's ever going to be a championship level fighter. I don't think he has the ground skills to be able to do that. Um, but if the, if everything I guess falls into place and he gets a you know where to get a title shot against um, you know I, I don't know I suppose somebody like Cody Garbrandt or something he might be able to outstrike um, but uh, you know it, it just it's it's you know it's a, he's just a fun fighter to watch and I think him when Zabit would be crazy um, it could you know I don't I, I don't know where, how Zabit would be in a firefight. Um, we kind of saw that uh, Rodriguez is not someone to back down and necessarily slow the action. Yeah, so I don't. I, I don't. Know. I, I think it'd be a replay of like of Rodriguez and and Frankie Edgar. I think he would just get, you know, pressured and dragged and grinded out again. Yeah, but I don't know if I don't know if Zabit's got the takedowns. I mean, uh, Zombie tried to take him down on a handful of occasions and and was unsuccessful. And so I don't know. I you know after you know thinking that I mean initially I think I called for a, a submission from uh, Zombie last week if I. If I remember right, um, I, I said I thought he would use some, you know, at least his crazy submissions would give him a chance. But, you know, as it turns out, he couldn't get him to the ground. So I don't know. That just might be something that's just Frankie. Mm. I mean, you know, we can debate whether the what would be a better fight. But obviously, out of all three of these guys, Frankie's the better fighter. And especially with his uh, with his wrestling ability, he, that would be the, the kryptonite probably for both of these guys um, if, if they were to have it. But, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd do Zabit, uh, you know, Zabit versus uh, – uh, Rodriguez or Zabit versus Zombie, you know. Um, I, I think both of those guys should avoid Frankie Edgar, um, and, and I'd have to look into the rankings to uh, to necessarily see where where the other guys should fall. But uh, you know, it turned out. I mean, it was just it turned out to be a really fun way for them to end their 25th anniversary show. 
Um, oh yeah, that I'm, whole event was was the graphics. I, I loved what they did with the with the mat and the graphics and everything. I wouldn't mind if they did that. I mean, it's the 25th year. I wouldn't mind if they did that until New Year's Eve. But I, I don't know why they ever got rid of the logo. I mean, maybe people think it's too old school or whatever, but I think the Ultiman logo, I, to me, that's the UFC. And I, I just think it's kind of a cool logo. I, I don't know why it ever really got, you know, they went to just kind of the generic gold UFC. And, you know, I know it's changed slightly over the years, uh, but, you know, I, I would I would keep that logo. I just think the look, the colors, I just I just like it. I don't know, you know, maybe it's... Yeah, it was a nice, it was a nice change, but I think they the only reason they changed it, obviously they were trying to distance themselves from what they started out as. <clears throat> but the sport's been around long enough that um, I think the, bringing it back wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, I just think that he should be in the – I think that Ultiman logo in the middle of the mat, I just think it looks classy, and I just think it's cool. I, to me, that's the to me that's the UFC. All this other stuff is, is um, you know, uh, high-priced, you know, company stuff, and, and to me that represents the, the, the heart of what the sport's about, and that's basically finding out who the, the baddest man on that night is. Uh, no matter what your style or technique is. Um, with that said, the co-main event uh, was pretty cool too. We saw uh, Cowboy Cerrone fought Mike Perry, a little bit of bad blood between uh, two former training partners. And as it turns out, uh, Cerrone got the first round armbar submission, um, which made him the all-time uh, UFC leader in wins and finishes. Um, again, on the 25th anniversary of the event, uh, can't really ask for a much better storyline uh, than that unfolding. No, no, and um, I mean that's one that I, that I have to confess I got I definitely got wrong for some reason I thought that uh I thought it it would be uh I thought Mike Perry could probably hurt him early in the rounds because of the power and stuff but you know the thing is with with Cowboy he's uh he's he's definitely a complete fight fighter and, and mixed martial artist and uh you know like it's like you forget how good his submissions are if you don't see them for a while you know what I mean. I always yeah. thought of him as a striker, or a kickboxer, and then I always forget that he, of all his submission wins he has. And then that one in particular, I mean, Mike Perry definitely needs to, uh, he should have pressured in rather than try to, the slamming and, and pulling away, that's always that's always a recipe for a, for a choke or, or a submission. So it was, uh, it was good. It shows, showed uh, Cerrone's pe uh, grappling pedigree and his, and his uh, you know, what do they, the boxers like to call it, ring generalship, like his cage generalship. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's, he's a he's a throwback fighter. He's got mm -hmm. all the techniques, and and I mentioned it on the show last week that you know I, I actually said something about his jujitsu and and his a little bit of his submission wrestling, which is not really submission wrestling so much. It's more of just a dangerous guard. Um, his jujitsu is really what it is. But um, we we talked about with AJ about the size uh being probably the biggest issue, and and Cerrone being a really a natural one fifty five er, um, yeah, fighting, fighting at one seventy. And that was the other reason I was I I I didn't have him picked. But it turned out, I mean, it, it really kind of backfired on not only our picks, but on the fight itself, because uh, Mike Perry's the one who brought the fight to the ground. It's not, you know, Cerrone didn't get the takedown. Uh, it, Perry brought the fight down and then and then got reversed. So really, it, you know, it was a, it was probably a, 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 stra a strategical error on on Perry's part to decide to to leave the feet, uh, where obviously. That's where he had the power and, and the size advantage, and, and kind of went into to, uh, you know Cerrone's world as far as on the ground, uh, you know, in, in that kind of uh, confrontation. I I don't know. I just thought it was an error by Perry, um, and uh, and that's really what cost him the fight. But but again, uh, you know, mad props to Cerrone. I, you know, UFC Hall of Famer. I mean, you talk about guys who who never necessarily won a belt, but are are, uh, are no doubt Hall of Famers, and you know, uh, I I think he's kind of leading that charge uh you know never mind some of the the other guys who already got put in their their hall of fame but just an mma hall of fame in general um for guys that never won a major well he was a wec champion but uh, but as far as uh you know guys that uh or no did he never won the wec he lost to, to varner um so but with that said i mean he's just a hall of fame fighter always entertaining and um Curious to see what matchup they give him at 155. Well, the, the that was the thing I was going to say. That, that I mean, I don't know why it popped up. Um, I don't know what what the sources were. It's, it 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 didn't look like it was confirmed at all. The last time I checked, anyway. But uh, um, they're talking about uh, him and McGregor. Um, I think Scrap Digest or some website put it out, but I, I didn't see where they're getting their information from. And um, I feel like given McGregor. 
McGregor's options and uh, you know where Cerrone's at right now, it'd be a good money fight for him. And and McGregor kind of needs a uh, uh, not not a top two or three <laughs> fighter at one fifty five. So maybe I don't know. Maybe uh maybe that's something that might have legs considering yeah. Cerrone didn't take any real damage. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. I don't think McGregor should should flirt with uh, Khabib right now. I think he should let Khabib go through a couple more fights or. or retire or whatever he chooses to do before he gets back into that mix. And um, Ferguson probably deserves the shot at Khabib or does deserve it. Um, I don't, I don't see Connor having a rematch with Poirier, um, even though it kind of makes sense. I don't think that's a fight that he has any real reason or to take um, the Diaz fights, just a, you know, a fight that'd be fun to watch, but we've seen it twice. Yeah. It'd be um, a big money fight though. If they you know, do it, it. You, know it, you know, they're with him, and they're all going to be big money fights. I mean, I've I've said it before. I think if he rematches anybody, it should be Jose Aldo if Aldo's willing to fight at one fifty five. But you know, the Cerrone fight makes sense. You know, it's it's uh, again. I mean, I don't. I feel like it's another one of those fights where if if Cerrone's able to get it down to the ground again, Connor has trouble. You know, and, and uh, especially with all the submissions that that uh, Cowboy would throw at him. But I don't know. Definitely be a good fight. Um, and I'm curious to see, I know I heard rumors today of, uh, Justin Gagey against, uh, Anthony Pettis. Oh yeah. That, that one's got better sources than, uh, than the, the one I mentioned. I know Brett Alcamoto even he mentioned that before, uh, before I made my way to, to do this. I saw that online. You know, the other fight would be obviously Gagey and, uh, Gagey and, and Cerrone would be a, uh, would be a fun one too. I, I know, um, I believe there's an event coming up. The first big ESPN event is going to be in Phoenix. So, that's kind of a, a good location for both of those guys or, or at least one of them to be, be headlining. So it wouldn't surprise me, but um, yeah, I don't know if he can get the McGregor fight. Good for him, man. Let him get a gigantic payday and, and, uh, and see where he's at as far as, you know, that would tell us where McGregor's at too. He's either, he's either fallen below the top five or, or he's still, uh, you know, still in the mix with, with all the big guys in that division. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of standout fights from that fight, uh, Denver card though. I mean, you know, I, I, I think Mace, Macy Barber picked up uh, a lot of fans. Uh, if people hadn't been following her from LFA, I, I have, so I kind of knew she was going to win. I mean, she, uh, I know people were giving her, uh, she had a little trouble making weight or whatever, but I mean, she's definitely, uh, she's definitely a little, a little fire starter for her division. So, uh, I think she's we'll the, see a lot more the, her. She's the 20 year old straw weight or. 21 year old straw or something that's yeah she she's aiming to ba- break uh john jones record as the youngest yeah. UFC champion ever she still has a couple years on that and obviously she's going to need that to kind of work her way up but um i i love it you know i i the violence she showed and the and the the willingness to you know like i said i don't want to see anybody get maimed but um that's their job and, and yeah. she certainly she called out mckenzie dern which i thought was weird i don't I don't know if it's weird. I mean, I think it's a fight that, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where Mackenzie Dern is right now. I don't know if Mackenzie Dern can make 115. That's why I thought it was weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but if you're throwing out a name against somebody that you're not afraid, you know, if you think your ground game's strong enough and you could beat somebody up, then, you know, you go for the name, I guess. I, yeah. um, I, I don't know. At 115, you know, uh, you know, it might be too early, but I don't know. We just saw Carolina uh, Kovacavich get knocked out. You know, if she really wants to shoot up the board and fight a top five, maybe that. But even then, that that seems like it might be too extreme. Uh, you know, maybe maybe somebody like um, uh, Angela Hill or or Alexa Grasso or something like that would be more of uh, of the next step for her um, in trying to get in the top fifteen, top ten rankings. Yeah. What was the other fight that stood out to you? From that night, uh, I mean, obviously the the one um, controversial, I guess it was a controversial st- stoppage with Chad Skelly, with the uh, the choke that really wasn't in, and and um, the ref, uh, who, who was his opponent, was making his debut. What was his hey, name? Uh, Bobby Moffat. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. That, that one stood out only because it. Sh- I don't think it should have been stopped, and and uh, I mean. Um, if you if you listen to Kelly's multiple explanations of how he was escaping that choke, that's that's how you escape it. I mean, he had to lock the legs for it to get in, and he and he didn't. But uh, um, the thing about the flopping of the arm, I I mean, I I sometimes if you're used to grappling, you're you're not always as tense as you would think, you know. And and if you're if you're focusing on defending 
a submission and some ref is grabbing at your arm i mean you tend to be present in what you're doing and uh i mean the arm grab you know is not something he was probably thinking of responding to you know what i mean yeah uh you know it's that's a tough call i you know again i i'm i'm the first to uh to kind of get on some referees um uh, I've never, never been one to, to not state that I might just like for some referee calls, but I don't know. I thought he was out when I watched it initially. I thought he was out. Um, you know, it, like you said, I mean, he's kind of in his own world trying to fight that thing, but I thought his arm, you know, when the ref reached for his arm, I thought he kind of showed, you know, that it was limp. So I don't know. Um, I don't know how you get around that. Um, you know, we've also seen other refs not stop fights where people are choked unconscious for, for seconds, if not minutes. and and you know, if if something's gonna kill somebody, that's that's what it's gonna be. If if uh, an incompetent ref uh, doesn't stop a fight, yeah. So I don't know. It's it's that's I I don't know how that works. Um, I think with something like that, we have the replay now. I think if they can go to a replay and see that it's in question, I you know. Well, they called it a TKO officially because of the replay thing, which was weird. <laughs> the TKO, I saw John McCarthy comment on that and say that that's not even possible. There's no way it could be a TKO. It's either got to be a technical submission. Oh, I mean, that's there's only there's only one. You, it's not a TKO. It was as yeah. a result, it was a result of a. I mean, that that's what they said and put on the screen though. That's what I'm saying. Like that that yeah. just threw everybody off. That it was just even even Moffitt's uh, win was a little marred when they interviewed him. He wasn't too happy. He was just kind of like, yeah, this is not really the way I want to win. You know, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't know how you'd go about it. It would be a cool way if, if we could just, you know, maybe they, I don't know. It's a tough thing. I, it'd be cool if they could somehow split the winner's purse and then it's instantly re signed for, you know, 60 days from now or, or 90 days, depending yeah. on how, how much injuries take place up until that, until that moment in the fight. I don't know. I, I think we warrant a rematch, though. Yeah. I mean, I, if, if the guys want a rematch and I say that, otherwise, you know, I don't think it's really a loss for Skelly. I think everybody kind of knows how it went down and, and, you know, I don't think he's going to penalize him in, in the rankings as far as moving up, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, you know, one of the other ones, your champ, Jermaine, Jermaine Duran to me, uh, won another boring fight over uh, Raquel Pennington. You know, I went to get food when that fight came on, like not for nothing. I, I knew she was going to win. I, I actually picked her to win by decision. <laughs> Because I, I know she's strong for the, her weight class and she's good at it, but like you said, it's just uh, it's not something I, I feel the need to see. Yeah, I just don't feel like she really puts herself out there to try to uh, try to ever finish fights, and, and I don't know what happened to Raquel. Maybe that loss to uh, Nunez took it out of her, but she seems like she's uh, she's kind of sailing it in at this point. I, I don't know if, or I just don't know if she's at a level now where she's fighting people that that are just I, above her level. I do have to say, though, I mean, uh, and, and, you know, like we can have our criticisms over fighters and their fights and stuff, <laughs> but there's a line that should be drawn. I mean, Durandamy did an interview uh, during fight week. Uh, I think it was with MMA Junkie where she, she was telling us that people were saying, <clears throat> I'm coughing and I'm not, I'm coughing, I'm not laughing. Um, people were saying uh, that she should kill herself because of uh, the UFC 208 thing. And I was just like, how messed up is that? Like, that's not even, that's not even like, I, I'm critical of fighters and, and I'm not that happy with, you know, her performance, but you know, you could just not watch it. Like I said, I went and got food, you know, yeah, like, that's, that's just pure nonsense. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, the fight with home was, that was a little bit of both. Um, I don't, I don't think many times she's going to fight Holly home and finish home. I think that's a fight that's bound to be kind of a, a snooze fest or at least a, a stalemate for most of the fight. This fight, you know, I feel like if you're the former or the however you want to call her as far as whether she's the champion, 145 pounds or, you know, she was crowned it, you know, and, and technically never lost and hasn't, you know, but you got to you got to be able to go in there and try to try to finish somebody like Pennington. I mean, we talk about somebody like Macy Barber making her debut and she's obviously not fighting somebody at of Pennington's level, but you know, you got to go in there for the, the, the kill. Um, yeah. You know, and I just don't see the, I don't see that in Durand me. I feel like when she was a younger fighter, uh, maybe in strike force and maybe I'm delusional thinking about it, but I just felt like she was more of a dangerous fighter and, and tried to tried to finish people in her fights. So I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if it's the, the UFC thing as far as maybe she's worried about losing a fight and, and getting sent packing. Um, obviously, yeah. the UFC is not happy with her. Uh, to the they, uh, she was about the only fighter I saw that won a fight that didn't get an interview afterwards. Um, so, wow! Yeah, 
I didn't even think I about that. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, obviously, they're not happy with her. And as long as she wins, they can't really do much about it. But um, yeah, that's true. But if she loses, you know, and I don't know if losing is the worst thing in the world for her. Um, she could go to Bellator and fight at 145 there. There's matches with Julia Budd and, yeah. and some other people that, you know. Cin- Cindy Dandu is talking about Bellator. I know we, I know we we're going to talk about that uh, next. Um, that's this weekend's uh, 209. Cindy Danduis is on that card. I didn't even know that. She, yeah, she, was... she has a one fight deal with Bellator. I think it's one of their ones where they give people a one fight card and then or one fight deal, and then if she wins, she gets to uh, she'll get a longer extension with the with the yeah because she, she she was doing a bare knuckle thing. I know she did that a uh, couple one or two fights, right? Or she she did no no, no. not bare Ryzen. She, she did Ryzen. Ryzen. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. She fought she fought in Ryzen. She fought um, King Reina and actually got the win. Um, yeah, which was you know. I guess an upset as far as most people thought. I mean, going into the fight, I, but. I think that's telling of, of, especially with all the trade talk, I think that's just telling where Coker and Bellator, I mean, those fighters, you, I mean, we could probably see Darren Crookshank come, come into Bellator and fight for something on short notice one day. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think that's where we're at. And far as the whole world of MMA goes, you know, uh, outside of the UFC, um, I, I think we're going to see, see a lot of that stuff going on. Um, and, and I think that's the what's I think that's best for for business and best for the sport is is having guys eligible to be able to fight wherever a fight's needed. So I don't know. Um, you know, uh, we uh, see guys. We I mentioned guys. the uh, the bare knuckle thing. I know you said you you saw the 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 new one, what, WBKFF or whatever it is. Yeah, the world uh, the world bare knuckle fighting federation. Um, well, what's the deal with them? I saw I saw Boss put something on social media where. Apparently guess, they had some troubles getting the vent going or money issues. Or yeah, something I like think that. I think um, I mean, without reading too deep into it, I think uh, basically I took it as one of the guys, somebody in the organization took some ma- money and run, ran with it. Mm. Um, so some one of the early investments or or something was taken um, that might have led them to not be able to pay guys like Sean Merriman and and um, and uh, Brendan Ward. Those are a couple of the guys who probably were the the higher some of the higher paid talent that night but um you know i I watched the the first three of the uh the other organization and this was the debut of this one and you know i gotta say man the the fights are fun um i i know you haven't really caught up on a whole lot of them but um i mean this event was as good as as uh any of the other ones that i've seen and um i mean the fights are exciting um on this card you know a couple notable names is robbie peralta uh is in the lightweight tournament and uh and he put a uh, put a beating on somebody. He's a local fighter to me, former UFC fighter, uh, former Strike Force fighter. Um, I mean, he just turned a guy a guy uh, guy's face just. I mean, he just cut him up. I mean, it was it was it was pretty brutal. Um, yeah, I see. I always see the the aftermath and the photos and stuff. I mean, actually, I, I was looking into that Lethway that McKee uh, was telling us about last week because uh, I hadn't watched any of that, and it just, that just seems like bare knuckle Muay Thai with headbutts. Yeah, it's, I actually it's uh there's an event tonight. Um, I've actually ordered it on the fight uh fight app. Um, it's four ninety nine, so it's five bucks. It's from Japan. It doesn't come on till like one a.m. my time, so I'm gonna watch it when I get home from work tomorrow. But um, yeah, bare knuckle, basically no rules Muay Thai with uh with headbutts. So <laughs> can't really can't really go wrong with that. And um and for five bucks, I figured it was worth the worth the chance to see. I know this one's based in Japan, so um. I don't know if that's going to be any different than, than when they're in Thailand or, or other places in Indonesia, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean this, this card for the bare knuckle boxing, they allowed back fists. Um, they allowed some clinching a little bit more than the other organization. Mm. Uh, Christina Marks um, won by first round or second round TKO. She's the uh, runner up from the ultimate fighter uh, season. I can't recall exactly what season, but it, uh, obviously there's only been a couple of female. Any, any body UFC. shot knockouts? Uh, not body shot, uh, Julian Lane, uh, let me bang bro, uh, again from the ultimate fighter. He won a, a split decision in, in a close fight. Hmm. Um, Dakota Cochran, who took the bout, uh, took the spot, took the spot of, uh, of Brendan Ward against Johnny Hendricks kind of shocked everybody. And he, uh, he knocked out Hendricks 20 seconds into round two. Um, I mean, just blasted and blew his nose up, oh, uh, wow. just blood, blood all over the mat. Um, I mean, he basically just beat the hell out of, of Johnny Hendricks, which um, I think it's time for Hendricks to hang it up. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you, I mean, people are going to the bare knuckle thing because to kind of like lighten up their, uh, you know, their uh, training regimen or, or 
you know, just focus on the one thing instead of many things. But if, if he's not making it there, then yeah, yeah, I think he should hang it up. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know. I uh, I feel like he's one of those fighters that just uh, fell in love with his hands after his knockouts of, of uh, who do you knock out, Fitch and, uh, and Campman. Um, you know, I mean, that was prior to him fighting St. Pierre, but he just, you know, one of those guys who kind of fell in love with his hands. And, you know, if anything, it, with his wrestling, he should be doing something like Submission Underground or, you know, I mean, hell, do EBI or something. I mean, I don't think he's submitting anybody, but, um, you know, if he wants to go in there and just try to wrestle some people and, and look for a head and arm yeah. choke or something, you know, that's the stuff that he should, if he's just trying to make some extra money, um, that's what he should be doing. I, I just, you know, bare knuckle boxing thing's no joke. I mean, these guys... You know, you don't you, you take it lightly or you, you come in a little out of shape and you, you get your face rearranged and, and some serious some serious damage can occur. Um, you know, the, the main event that night was Chris Lieben and Phil Baroni. And, um, you know, I don't I don't like to throw this out too much, but it seemed to me like Baroni basically, you know, I don't want to say through the fight, but um, certainly didn't want to fight. Um, he came basically in shooting takedowns in a bare knuckle hmm. boxing match. <laughs> That's um, weird. Yeah, I mean, and then, and then, you know, Lieben, after about the third time of him coming in, um, almost shooting a double, uh, timed it and, and just drilled him on the temple and, and face planted yeah, him. Yeah, I saw the highlight of that. He got on the left hook to the temple. That was a, that was a good move. I mean, but I didn't, know, I didn't know it was takedown attempts that led up to it. Yeah, I mean, you can't really do a takedown, but he just charged across the ring. I don't think Baroni threw a single punch. Mm. Um, and so watching it with, with my cousin, I just kind of, you know, I commented it just seemed to me like, you know, I, again, I don't know the money situation and if Boss Root is the head of the organization or, or one of their reps. Um, obviously, they have credibility in my book, but I just felt like it was almost one of those things where Baroni didn't think he was getting – in my mind, it looked like a fighter who, who didn't think he was getting paid that much and didn't want to risk getting injured. So he was just going to either kind of push it across, try to grapple and, and run the clock out or get disqualified or – you know, it just seemed like he didn't – he wasn't in there to fight. The look on his face um, – the whole situation and then i mean and then he got drilled so uh, again it's one of those things where you know lieben lieben if he can stay healthy and and i know he's had some some serious health issues that that apparently got cleared but you know that's a sport where he would he would probably thrive yeah he was you definitely know. uh yeah he's definitely a heavy-handed guy you know heavy-handed guy and he's and he's got no fear so you know again he's a local to me out here so uh it was cool to see him win and and uh and Baroni, like I said, I just another guy who who if he's gonna fight needs to stick to the king of the cage, the real small regional shows and, and fight the local, you know, beer drinking guys who are who are fighting for five hundred bucks and he can go out there and make, you know, three thousand dollars or, or five thousand, whatever they pay him these days mm, to headline a yeah. card. But that's what I'd stick to if I was him. But that pretty much wraps up the past weekend. Um we uh let, before we wrap this up, let's uh let's just do some picks for the upcoming fights. Uh, we got Bellator 209 um, coming up. Uh, I think the event's actually on Thursday. Doesn't air until Friday, which I don't understand with the zone. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I I don't even want to try to figure out why we pay for a thing to watch late fights or. So I, I thought the whole... it's not on the zone live. No, it doesn't play until Friday night, so we get a full 24 hour tape delay uh, hmm. for an event which includes uh, you know one of Bellator's best champions in in uh in Pip, patricio pitbull um against you know one of their young studs uh, emmanuel sanchez um i mean you can't really have a better fight at, at featherweight in bellator and again uh basically you'll have to stay off social media for 24 hours unless you want to risk seeing who won that fight but um you know as far as a pick goes in that fight i don't i don't uh uh, the, a part of me just uh, thinks that Manuel Sanchez might be uh, might be kind of taking that. I don't want to say taking the torch because I don't think Patricio is anywhere done, but I just feel like this might be one of those fights that's happening in Israel where uh, where we see a bit of an upset and, and, and a new champion crowned. Um, I don't know. I, I to me it's a toss up fight. I'm a huge Pitbull fan, um, and I don't think I've ever picked against him before ever. But I just have this feeling that something might go down and, and uh, Sanchez might end up. Uh, Mm. I begin with the W. Uh, no, but again, I, I don't have that feeling. I I got people picked. I I think he can probably get drop him in in the middle rounds to sec round two or three. And then uh, oh, just looking at the card here, Ryan Couture fights. Uh, he fights with somebody named Haim Ghazali. I don't even know honestly who that is. Uh, Israeli fighter. Um, and then the other fight really that stands out is Phil Davis 
um, 19 and four, former Bellator champion against uh, Vadim Nemkov, nine and two, uh, one of Fedor's proteges, uh, rising uh, uh, veteran uh, coming off of a, a big knockout win. Uh, gosh, who did he fight? I'm gonna have to look that up real quick. But uh, he uh, he's obviously one of the future. Oh, he's coming off a win off of McGeary. Um, mm. Oh McGeary. yeah, yeah up with uh with his legs so or you with kicks so you know i uh again i want to go with nemkov i think he's the better more complete fighter but uh i just feel like it's going to be probably another one of those phil davis fights where somehow he's able you know if he's able to wrestle i think he's i think phil davis um obviously will uh will win the fight um if it stays on the feet i think nemkov's uh got too heavy of hands um Davis is coming off getting knocked out by, uh, by, uh, gosh, again, when he took a head kick knockout, uh, who was that? Who, uh, oh, uh, he won. I'm sorry. He knocked out Linton Vassell in his last yeah. fight by head kick. Um, his only loss in, in, uh, in Bellator is to Ryan Bader. In fact, his only loss in like his last 12 fights was twice to Ryan Bader. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I think it's going to be a great fight. I think that'll actually be the, I th- I don't I think. I think Davis can outwork him and, and, and pull off a decision and win. I don't I don't know if uh, I don't know I don't know if he can if he's gonna, you know, hurt him enough because Davis is pretty smart and, and he's mobile. But I mean you never know what, what fighting on that side of the world can do for folks, you know? Like like it could it could change things, especially if they have uh I always think about uh Fernando uh Gonzalez that we had on the podcast with his fight that we talked to him for and he documented his whole journey over there and um, you know, the 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 problems he had just getting to it like if anything like that is a factor i always just wonder if, if that is going to affect the fight but otherwise i mean as far as their, their preparedness and their skill set i i think we can see i'm expecting to see the, the phil davis that we're used to seeing yeah i mean uh, you know i think for the sake of the bellator light heavyweight division i think a nemkov win would be would be ideal um give a chance for some new blood um depending on obviously what happens with Bader and his fight with Fader for the heavyweight title. I don't know if he ever plans on dropping back down to light heavyweight or if he's just going to uh, kind of live the easy life and not cut weight and, and, and stay at heavyweight after that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think it's a good fight. Um, I think the main event will be one of those fight of the, the year uh, things between Pitbull and, and Sanchez. Um, and, uh, and, and then that brings us to uh, Saturday night. We have UFC uh, Argentina. Um not the deepest card in the world, but um, a couple good fights. Uh, main event: Neil Magny against uh, Santiago uh, Ponzahi Bibo. Um, and if you want to try Ponza to say that, there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I think Santiago uh, Ponzi uh, pulls out that. I think Magny had his run where he won six, seven, eight fights in a row, whatever it was. Me too. Uh, but I, I think that. Uh, I think his run messing out with the, the top of the division is, is going to catch up and, and, uh, and he'll go down. Um, yeah. Coleman, event should be a fun one though. Ricardo Lamas and Darren Elkins, uh, two guys who generally leave it in the cage. Um, I, I, I see La, I see Lamas, uh, yeah. winning that fight. I think I'm Elkins leaving Lamas too, just because, uh, I, I feel like, uh, he's, he's still got something to prove. Yeah. I think Elkins just takes too much damage. Um, even though he's a, I mean, he's awesome to watch and, extremely talented i just think he takes a lot of damage and and lamas knows how to give out damage so um i don't know if uh, a punch from lamas could 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 put him out um but that kind of wraps it up that's the main fights there you know khalil roundtree fights uh cynthia cavillo is on the card uh michael prazier is on the card um you know and, and then uh and then some other foreign fighters um but yeah, I, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll have to see. Should be at least an exciting week. Uh, you can't go wrong with Bellator. Just gonna have to say, like I said, stay away from social media until uh, that goes on Paramount and DAZN on on Friday night. Um, uh, I know uh, is another quick fight announcement. I know uh, Virgil Zwicker, who's been on the show, uh, just signed to fight for a title fight in uh, in Siberia, Russia, for an event called uh, Real uh, or uh, I'm sorry, Modern Pancre- Pancration Fighting. Huh. So he'll, he'll be, uh, he gets a, he gets a world title or, you know, their title fight. Um, I'm not real, uh, clear on his opponent yet. Um, I do know it's the champion, but I haven't had a chance to do, uh, proper research, but, uh, that's December 15th. So that's, uh, 
about a month away, uh, Virgil will be going back to uh, Mother Russia to, to try try to win a, a fight and uh, and head to Siberia in winter. So that yeah. should be that should be interesting. But um, we'll talk more about that when the time comes. Um, again, everybody, thanks for listening. Um, you can follow us at Combat Hour on uh, on Twitter. You can follow myself at MMA Hawk Twenty One on Twitter and Instagram, and you can follow Ed uh, at Carbazal on Twitter and at Carbeerzal on Instagram. Um, until next time, Ed, uh, I know we got Thanksgiving next week. We're going to try to do a show, uh, on Tuesday if everything falls together. Um, yeah, hopefully we have a guest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we, if not, if not, then we'll just recap with what, what we've missed and see what we're doing for Thanksgiving and the fights and stuff. But yeah, hopefully we have a guest. We're supposed to have Michael Graves on, but, uh, he's having communication issues. Yeah. So. We try to have a guest every show, but, um, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. So, uh, yeah. We'll see what happens for next week. But um, again, everybody who listens, thanks. And uh, Ed, uh, have a good rest of the week, man. Get through the cold, and uh, I'll talk to you this weekend during the fights. All right, man. See you. Okay, uh, Michael Graves, thanks for taking the time to, to talk. I'm sorry we had to play phone tag and stuff. I, I know uh, you're having some issues with communication, but uh, I'm glad I finally got you on the phone. Uh, I, I, I can barely hear you, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was just saying I'm, I'm, gl- I'm glad you got the time to talk because uh, I know we're playing phone tag and you got a fight coming up, so I didn't want to take too much of your time. So I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no problem. So um, you're fighting in Russia December 21st for uh, Titan FC's first event, Titan FC 51. I know you're no stranger to fighting in Russia, but um, like, how did this all come to be with Titan FC? Uh, well, basically, you know, um, kind of been on a shit list, so to speak, ever since I got kicked out of the UFC, and uh, the Russians have been hard to get in contact with, and a big part of my career, even um, before the UFC, than just staying active. I mean, I'd like to fight fucking three, four times a year if I could. I mean, at least I feel like I'm able to pretty much like 90% of the time. I, you know, I've had to back out of a couple fights here and there because of injuries, but like I think just one in my, in my pro career. So I basically just reached out to Titan. I fought for him before. And um, yeah, that was it. You fought for them before. I, I didn't. I, I thought I looked into you to your record. I didn't see that. Um, so that's good. I mean, so it, your opponent. I know you're fighting someone that's undefeated. Do you know anything else about your opponent for this event? I Paul. No, he's Paul. <laughs> Just that he's Paul. So is he? I mean, I mean, you're 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 uh, in your prime. I know you said you're on on the the shit list with. Uh, with the UFC, but um, I mean, like, obviously, you're young enough to to still make your own way in the sport. Do you um, do you have any preparation that you do to fight uh, in Russia? I mean, it's 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 not it's not the same as fighting in the states. Obviously, you have to worry about travel and jet lag and stuff like that. Yeah, actually, I do the first time. Uh, obviously, when I fought in. Uh Russia, I got my ass kicked. It didn't really go my way. There was a lot of things off the mat um, that I could have done different going into Russia, like um, bringing certain things with me. Um, uh, you know, my training was good, keeping my head straight, but uh, basically now, and especially when I travel overseas, I basically have like a little action plan you know, things that I'm going to take, how I'm going to prepare myself, you know, like what if they, what if I don't get per diem when I'm over there? What if this doesn't happen? What if that doesn't happen? You know what I mean? I'm making sure that I got, I got my, you know, my ducks in a row, so to speak, I guess, whatever. So I know uh, you had left me the message before when we were trying to get in touch with each other that you're, you're training three times a day. And um, obviously, with with uh, the fight, I mean, it's it's December twenty first. It's it's a little over a month away. Um, 
but like how how are you handling how are you handling the the your your schedule with being prepared to fight and getting ready here versus getting over there like uh, mentally i mean do you lose sleep do you, do you change your sleep cycle i know some guys will start training at the time that they know they're going to fight uh, compared to here like like if it airs you know like if a fight airs and it's like 2 a.m. here the guys will train at 2 a.m. here is that something that you do fuck no <laughs> no hell no so, it'd be so hard I think to get everybody together at 2 a.m. I don't I think I think I'd be the only one in the gym wow I don't even I don't know how active you know um I usually to get over the jet lag I usually, like, when I say I train three times a day, like, I'm not sparring three times a day. I just, um, a big thing with me is not putting put too much pressure on myself in the gym. Sometimes I'll go in there with, like, a crazy amount of stuff that I want to do, and it just gets to the point where I become unmotivated because it's so hard to do all these things. So over the past couple of months, I've just made it a point to get to the gym every day. And, you know, some of my workouts might just be stretching. Like, I've, I've just started taking yoga regular, like, you know, like two or three times a week. So that's not a real hard workout, but it's a workout. You know, I sweat a lot in the class, and, you know what I mean? I just make yeah. a point to try to, get, I, to try to get in the gym every day, and when I get over into Russia, I usually just try to sleep when I first get there, you know? Because uh, this does this when you sleep, are you just catching up to their their cycle over there? It seems like I don't know. It just seems like 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 that's a rough trip. I know um, we had interviewed uh, uh, Fernando Gonzalez who fought over there uh, earlier in the summer, and uh, like his flight got delayed and stuff like that. So that's the only reason why I was asking because I know I I, I he lost he lost a decision in his fight. And I feel like the aggravation and the stress of just trying to get there and everything with the time difference kind of yeah, helps. Yeah, it, it's funny you say that because, you know, obvious, obviously they want the hometown guy to win, right? Yeah. So, like, when, like one thing they'll do is they'll, like, because uh, you got to have multiple flights in the States. Like, usually you'll, like, let's say I'm leaving out of Atlanta, right? I'll have to stop at, like, JFK and then go from JFK to, like, wherever the fuck I'm going in Russia and then wherever I got to go to my final destination. So what they'll do is they'll make, like, like let's say you land from Atlanta to JFK at, like, 5 p.m. They'll make your flight at, like, 5.30 from JFK <laughs> to, like, Russia, so there's no way you make it. So they, like, you know, they'll try to sabotage you like that sometimes. Oh, my God. I don't know. Maybe they don't, but I've seen it a lot. It seems you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. I, only because uh, Gonzalez like documented his his whole thing on social media, so that that's what made me ask the question. Um, your opponent, your opponent's name is Greg Ellis. The um, are the guys on this card? I mean, is it is it like a U.S. versus Russia, or, or are they just bringing guys from Titan to fight there and, and mixing it in with the uh, the Kazakhstan uh, promotions uh, fighters? I think they're just bringing in guys to fight. Because some of these guys, I mean, I'm looking at the names on the card. Obviously, the main, the, the, there's only two names on the card that looks like they might be f local from around there. Um, but you're, like, you're no stranger to fighting there, but uh, have you ever fought in this region of Russia before? Is it in, is, is that, is it in Russia? Is Kazakhstan in Russia? I think so. I mean, is it's... Uh, I don't know. I don't... I don't, you know, I don't, I never really worry about, I mean, it's not, I do, but I don't, I don't know where the hell I'm going or what I'm doing. <laughs> I know I'm going over there to fight, trying to keep my weight under control, eat, you know, keep my eating under control, make sure that I'm getting, you know, a good sweat in every day and just focusing on my opponent. If he, I do like the fact that. That's that's my my, my, my opponent's American because yeah. then he's got to make the same trip with me, so yeah. it kind of even 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 the playing field a little bit. Yeah, that, that's my mistake because I'm going off of the press release. I mean, uh, Russia is one of the places that Titan FC is uh, planning on going to, along with Kazakhstan and Tajikistan and ne the Netherlands and Brazil and Cuba. So I just it's their first it's their first foray outside of the the United States. So. My mistake. Sorry about that. I mean, again, we're talking late after we've been playing phone tag, so my, my brain's a little fried too. But um, so like, 
uh, when you uh, what do you consider yourself as far as preparing for for the fight? Like when comparing yourself to your opponents, are you some guys determine themselves as strikers, grapplers? I know I know you've trained at American Top Team, and you guys are pretty well rounded. But do you ever think of yourself as a unique style combatant? I mean, whatever, really. I mean, I, I, I like, um, like, I love, I've been talking about competing in jiu-jitsu for forever. I just, I, you know, kind of have to do it in the May at the moment. Um, but uh, I would say I like jiu-jitsu the best, but I'll do whatever. A lot of times in fights, it really depends on how the fight's going. You know what I mean? As to what you're going to do. I definitely train all aspects of MMA. I'm probably the best at like wrestling and ground and pound and jiu-jitsu, obviously, it's how I've had the most success, but I've definitely been working on my striking. I think it's gotten a lot better. My footwork, I've been moving a lot more and moving my head a lot more than I did when I first started fighting and not standing so square. So, um, you know, I'm kind of going to do whatever, I guess. Are you... um? We well, talked about competing in jiu-jitsu. I know you're from Ohio originally, so I mean a lot of good wrestlers come out of, out of there too, right? So is is that something you fell into naturally? Is that how you got into fighting? I got into fighting just because I like, you know, uh, I like wrestling a lot. And honestly, in, in Ohio, at least when I was there, there wasn't really a whole lot of even jiu-jitsu. There wasn't there wasn't any jiu-jitsu. There was some boxing, but um, not a whole lot of MMA, and uh, I just, um, I thought it'd be a good outlet for me. I could never, I don't, I, I wish I was the type of guy that could work in an office and just have a normal job, but unfortunately, I don't really think that's what God intended for me, so. Yeah, I mean, you're obviously good at, 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 the, at the fight game, too. Do you think... Um, uh, your time, your time with the UFC and on the Ultimate Fighter, has that made it easier for you to get booked for fights? It does. It, no, it doesn't seem like it. Hmm. I think after I got kicked out of the car, like I said, I've been a lot of people shitless. So I'm just happy that Titan was cool to me and got me a fight and wasn't you know jerking me around and stuff like that. I know you. I mean, I know you mentioned the shit list, and, and I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to bring up anything bad, but like, what do you think? You, in your mind, what do you think gets you off the list? Like, uh, is it just being busy and picking up wins, or, or, or how do you how do you get how do you get back uh, to 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 being yeah. in in a higher higher regard? I mean, first of all, from like a human standpoint, you know, beyond MMA, especially knowing that like my son's gonna see everything, one, well he's definitely going to see everything one day, you know, with the internet and everything. I just want to show people that I'm in a bad spot, I've done things to change my situation and better myself, and I have, and I'm still doing it, and as far as the MMA aspect is concerned, it's a lot about getting notoriety, it seems like, you know, McGregor style, which I'm not the best at, I have a couple people trying to help me, but... I don't know. I don't know about that route, but as um, I would say, for me, just just beating the fuck out of people. That, that like that's my plan. I feel like I've been my own. You know, like I don't want to take away anything from the people that have beat me or have given me tough fights or draws because they're great fighters and they were the better men that night. But I just feel like it's been more me beating myself than anything else. I'm just ready to get in there and. Just beat the hell out of somebody, honestly. And I feel like what I said in the beginning, fighting more consistently would help that. You know, it's hard to fight once a year. Mm. or one, You know what I mean? Like yeah. once every nine months, it's just like, God, even when I was in the, with the UFC, it seems like it was just difficult for some reason. I'm not really sure why. You said uh, you have you have people trying to help you with the, the marketing aspect of getting yourself out there. Who who's Who's helping you? <laughs> I don't really think they know what the fuck they're doing. They basically just tell me to like post stupid shit all the time and I never want to post anything and I just Yeah, I I don't know, like I just kinda wanna keep like I realized as I like the first thing I realized in the UFC is that like I definitely wanna be fucking rich 
You know what I mean? Yeah. They have a lot of money. I don't know if I want to be famous, though. Yeah. I don't know if I like, you know what I mean? Like, at one point, I'm like, I would love to have, you know, 10 million Instagram followers and Twitter followers and get this and get that. And at the same time, I'm like, I don't know if I do. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I'm, I don't know. No, I, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from, and, and it's something that comes up a lot. I, I know I've written about it and the, all the places I write at, too. And I think, I think I mean, the there's one of two things you can do. You, you can do... You can do all the crazy stuff that, that and put it on social media that gets attention, or you can just do what 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 it seems like you're you're more inclined to do, which is just get fights and and win fights. And and I think both formulas work. I mean, if you look look at a guy like uh, you're going to Russia, look at a guy like Fedor Emelianenko. I mean, he he barely says a word. Right. And, you know what I mean? But everyone respects his performance and what he's done in fighting. So I think. Either plan works, and and if and you should just probably just go with where where your heart's at. So if if uh, fighting for Titan FC and fighting in Russia is, is or and wherever they're gonna go, uh, at Kazakhstan, Russia, wherever. I keep saying Russia. I'm sorry. That that's my fault. But um, you know what I mean. Like like I think you can get the. I think you can get to where you want to be, just by fighting and winning. So I mean maybe post training footage and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Or or post post uh, some grappling matches. I mean. I don't know what they're telling you to post because you, you, it seems like it bothers you. But uh, you know, at least for your own documentation and your own research and to see where you're, where you know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. I mean, I, I think fight fans like seeing that. Um, I don't know if you, you agree with that at all, but maybe that's that's a way you, you can go. What do you think? It's funny you say that because I do agree with that, and part of me like doesn't want to reveal any of my like ancient kung fu secrets. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff I do in the gym that I don't want people to rip off. You know what I mean? So that's something I always think about. Yeah, I mean, um, it's funny that, you, that you're mentioning about, like, like a lot of people mention that too, but... So, like, uh, I covered the Bell, uh, um, Bellator 208 when uh, Ryan Bader and Fedor fought each other, and I was there for the fight week, and, and uh, during the um, the fight week open workouts... The the what Ryan Bader did to to um to his opponent the the Friday before to he did to Matt Mitrione because those events were back to back so when he when he faced Matt Mitrione the the takedown drill that he did at the open workout was pretty much what he did to Matt Mitrione and um, I mean I don't know I think if you're really good at it I mean maybe don't be so shy about revealing it because if it's you one of your strongest uh, one of your strongest assets maybe your opponent won't be able to stop it. So I don't know, man. I, I I just it just seems like you're 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 finding your you, you know what you want to do to get back to where you want to be, and um I'm maybe just following your your own gut is the best way to go because uh, uh fighting in a promotion that seems to be growing like Titan FC, and and they're doing this thing overseas. It's it's probably a good way to start. Um, so are you excited about it or is it stressful? How are you handling it? I'm happy to have a fight. Like I said, I've been training good. I'm just fucking around about that Instagram stuff. I just don't care, <laughs> to be honest. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just not really into it. You know, I just kind of stick to myself and do my own thing. And like I said, I, just, I feel like I've just been getting better and better and stronger and stronger. So, you know, I had to um, um take some time off because I had a little bit of a boo-boo, not going to say where I don't want anybody to know but it wasn't bad just had to take like a few days off and um back at it now and uh yeah man I just I feel like physically better than I ever have before uh, you know I'm just ready to go in there and get after it really I'm not I don't want to you know fuck Instagram I'm trying to knock somebody out for once I know I can I know it's in me that's just what I want to do. Cool. So um, December twenty first. I mean, it's the first. It's the first overseas event for Titan FC. Titan FC fifty one. I mean, you're on the. You're one of the featured bouts on the card. Um, I'm pretty sure whatever you do, you won't have to worry about posting the the UFC fight. It's airing on UFC Fight Pass. So I think it's a good uh, path to get back on the people's good graces for 
what you want to do. I mean, you're what are you? You're 27 years old, right? You're, you're I mean, you're still young. Yeah. Is that young? <laughs> yeah, I mean, younger than me. <laughs> so. You're old. <laughs> you're old as shit. No, 27 is a good age, man. Trust me. Trust. Take it from a 43 year old. I wish Wait. I was 27. <laughs> Um, hey, well, would you do, would you supplement, like, I mean, you said you like competing in jiu-jitsu, have you ever looked into, that's getting pretty popular now, have you ever looked into doing that on the side, like, uh, like, um, fight to win or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, man, for sure, honestly, and, I, and I've tried to put myself out there a lot, like, I wanted to go to the, the AD, ADCC trials in New Jersey, but I just kind of swing that with my work schedule, you know, I still got to work a little bit because I'm not making that much money right now, yeah. and I tried to get a guy to grapple me at, like, a local venue we have in Atlanta, and he was going to do it, now he's not going to do it, you know what I mean, and it's like, I don't know, I went to a, uh, I went to a Kakudo tour t tournament, like, a year ago, and got a second, it was like a, um, like a grappling tournament, yeah. I'm an absolute no gi, and I, did, I thought I thought I did pretty well. I went against a few guys who had a lot of just jujitsu experience, and I thought I did real well. And um, what what division? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I would love to compete in jujitsu. I would, I really like it. And I think I, I think people would be surprised at how good I would do. At, you know, honestly. If you don't mind me asking, well, what division did you compete in? I don't even. What, what are the weight class? <laughs> the whole, like, like, what, what was it by rank or, or uh, experience? What? Do you remember if it was by rank or experience? Like, were you like blue belt division or? Oh, um, no, I'm a purple belt, but I would probably go that where it's like the highest division in Nogi. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure you, you could get featured if you were on a fight to win pro. So maybe, uh. Maybe you should uh, uh, like follow them and try to reach out to them. I I, w I, I follow those events and cover them too. So it, it'd be nice to see you see you uh, grapple on there too. I mean, it's uh, definitely another way to make some money doing what you love. Yeah, and I've seen that. Um, was it? I don't know if it's combat jujitsu where they smack where they smack each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you know. Even though it's just smacks and. People probably won't be getting like knocked out or anything. Like just little things like that can make such a big difference in a grappling match. I don't think people really realize, you know what I mean? Especially when people are going for leg locks, which a lot of people like to do now at the higher levels. Yeah. You know, little things like that will make it a big difference. Yeah, cool. I mean, definitely, it definitely does. I mean, and the leg lock thing, I actually just, I actually just wrote something about that today. So it's definitely something that. Uh, that's uh, becoming more popular on the grappling circle, especially around here. I'm, on, I'm in the Northeast, in, in uh, New York, New Jersey, where the Danaher guys are, are coming from. So, But, um, um, I, again, Michael, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know it's late and you're busy and with work and, and training and stuff and, and the fight coming up. So um, I'm sorry we, we couldn't uh, get in touch sooner. And, and I know you're dealing with stuff over there with the, with the phone or whatever, but... I, I really do hope you do well on uh, December 21st at Titan FC. I know you, um, you're just trying to do what you love, and, and I think if you just keep at it, um, you know, it, it'll work out well for you. Thanks, man. All right, cool. Thanks for taking the time to talk. Uh, you have a good evening. Good, uh, good luck to you. All right, you too. All right.